Stumpers, what is going on? We are here for an episode of Twin Towers. This is the redraft episode with my man, Jape. How you doing? Doing great. Time for a little hindsight. It's 2020. There was no bad picks. I don't remember the bad picks. I just remember the ones I got right. Oh, I see what you did. Hindsight 2020. See? This guy's, a, you know what? He's going to Florida. We might lose him to Florida. He might, he might land with a, an NFL team out there. I have a question for you before we start this. Let's do it. Did you watch the first episode of the new season of Succession, and why not? Because I'm behind a full season because I'm a it, bad person. It's becoming – it's it's getting to a point of the level of disrespect. You are – you know who you are? You're Ryan Rosillo. I don't think Ryan Rosillo actually watches Succession. I, I'm on that – I think Bill Simmons watches too much, and that's where Dan and I are at. We're, like, breaking down the episodes. And Ryan Rosillo just has names. He's like, Logan? dead and it's like dude you don't fucking watch you should watch it incredible start to that season um so what we're going to be doing today i fucked up parsons very behind the curtain parsons does a lot of the legwork in the off season in planning episodes so i thought he wanted us to redraft 2018 through 2021 he just wants to do 2018 which is five years ago with some pretty important names in that draft uh, yeah and some like real dominoes it, the five year later thing i like because those are the guys who start to shape the nfl now, but be honest, when you had this idea, it wasn't because Lamar Jackson's in this draft. It just works. Yeah, he did. It's just, well, I mean, it kind of goes hand in hand because so first round picks, they're given four year contracts with a fifth year team option. That option is now done. So after five years, these are the guys who start getting their extension. So their, the rookie contract is done. So you can't say well, he's good for the price. Now these guys are all getting paid. And now it's who's worth that. Very Lamar obviously fighting, fighting with that. We'll get to Lamar in a bit because he was he was a big one in this. Yeah, he was he was very well down there. But I just wanted to make it known that we're not doing this just to, you know, vulture on this news. It is it's also a very good draft. If I'm being brutally honest, it's a very solid one, but with a lot of misses as as most are. So how do you want to do this, my friend? We did no sort of like planning of this, and I always feel it's the most fun when we do this. Do we? Go how about with... first we just kind of go pick by pick? Okay. Real quick, we'll talk about the major players, how we thought we're, you know, we're going to have to do a little honesty and uh, and reveal some takes from the past from before we had them on wax. Fair. And then I, I think at the end, we'll redraft at least the top 10, maybe a little more. And what we wanted our teams to do then, what we want our teams to do now in hindsight. So there are going to be certain picks that I'm going to give either a thumbs up, meaning I was fucking way right on that. And a lot of these names will know and thumbs down when I was way off. And especially at the quarterback position. And we can start with the lovable losers that are the Cleveland Browns that now employ a rapist. Mm -hmm. And in 2018, they thought they had their answer with Baker Mayfield out of the University of Oklahoma. Uh, the beginning of the Lincoln Riley, honestly, success tree. It's the it's the first first one through the door that I can recall. Maybe I'm missing someone. Um, Sorry, pause. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stumpers, Parsons gets phone calls. We're pausing this. Pause is another way for Parsons to say that his pizza has arrived, I guess. I, I've, That's all it was about. <laughs> it was just a pizza guy calling you to be like, hey, terrible um, timing. So Baker, I did not believe in Baker Mayfield. His greatest not, not thing. Not 1%. Not 1%. His greatest, his greatest thing from college, and I stand on the soapbox and I preach it, is when they beat the Ohio State Buckeyes the year after the Buckeyes beat Oklahoma, and he retaliated by putting the Oklahoma flag in the O. In the horse. Wonderful. The only, great. Thing, only thing. Um, I did not believe in him. And I I think I I think I get a, a thumbs up for this one. I, I did I was not wrong. So let's let's dive into the quarterback class real quick. Sure. Because this this was it defined it. It was considered to be a historically great quarterback class coming into it, similar to the way we have it now. Actually, didn't even think about this. Baker Mayfield, Bryce Young, some real like size comparisons. <laughs> Is it the program at that? There's quite a bit of parallels here. Sam Darnold is a little Levis? Oh, 100%. Yeah. White dude with hair, big arm. 100%. <laughs> Who's Josh Allen? It's Richardson. Oh, yeah, yeah. Super, super. super cannon arm, crazy measurables. Okay. I, I'm not sure. Is Stroud Rosen or Lamar? Oh, no, no, no. Stroud, Stroud is definitely Ro uh, Rosen because of the, the actual arm strength immediate. Like immediate yeah. – can't miss there. And honestly, you know, shout out to Johnny Rosa, who, the who I do the college football one with. He does not miss many. This was one of his first ever misses. He was really big on Rosen here. He thought Rosen instead of Darnold 
That's, I was very that's much. He was my guy. He was my guy at the top of this draft. I thought he was the best quarterback in this class. Who's that? Rosen? Rosen. I thought Darnold. And we were both wrong. We were both shit. I will say, though, I was screaming at the top of my lungs for the Patriots to draft Lamar Jackson in this draft. I thought he, he was were. the perfect heir apparent. This is when you and I first started, I think, becoming tight as friends. And I remember we were messaging, and you had mentioned to me, you're like, fuck, man, if, if the Pats take a flyer on Lamar, I'm either going to hate it or love it, but I need it to happen. And the fact they didn't. Yeah, it's 31, I thought it would, was perfect. Hindsight's 2020, right? I'm like, at the time I wanted you guys to, because I didn't think Lamar was going to be an NFL quarterback. I'm not lying. I, that's where I was at. And now looking at what he became, whoo, thank God. I, I didn't think it would translate that quick for sure. I won't say, like, I had the crystal ball. I thought Josh Rosen was better than him. But I thought at 23 or 31 with Tom Brady still elite, Give him a year with with McDaniel's learning under Tom. Didn't think Tom would hold on for five more years. To be honest, sure, I just, sure. it just it seemed like we were getting a Heisman Trophy winner and like an elite prospect at quarterback at the end of the draft potentially. And it just it doesn't usually line up that way. Can we can we fucking put the cards on the table of the five that were picked in the first round? There is one superstar and a guy about as close to the superstar peak as possible in Lamar, right? Josh Allen is the Oh, I would call them both superstars. Okay, fair, fair. So we got two. But the other three are like, not historically, they're really, really big busts. Donald and Rosen are absolute flameouts. Baker is a little bit more of a mixed bag. Like, I don't want to defend him too much, but like it's not the same kind of like Hindenburg that the others are. Josh Rosen has like half a start. This might have been, you know, and college football heads may put me to shame in the comments one day. This feels like a real Pac-12 draft. Just like scrolling through the draft. There's a lot of USC, a lot of UCLA. And I swear, when drafts turn out to be really Pac-12 centric, it goes one of two ways. Very busty. And the fact both these quarterbacks are from there makes, makes it all very true. Very busty or like sneaky good. And this felt feel like very overhyped Pac-12. Yeah. Neither USC or UCLA won the national title. We were just very oohed and awed by white quarterbacks with nice arms. I, I I loved where the Browns were too set up because I thought Bradley Chubb and Quilton Nelson were like generational talents. And I was like, they can get Chubb at one and Nelson at four and like just have the dirtiest trenches in the in the league and then go get the quarterback the next year. And they I, went for the sexy spots. I always thought they went quarterback one. Or I would have went something in something nasty, you know, Chubb or what Nelson would have worked. I agree. I, I thought Nelson was the best player in the draft by far. I, I was over the moon with him. He's <laughs> still the best interior lineman I've ever seen in college. Roquan, I think Roquan, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, anyone, anyone that, that knew me in this era, and there are some people that I know that follow this pod specifically. I don't think I was higher, higher on anyone than Roquan Smith. I feel like Roquan was the winner and it's the Georgia bias. It's that, incredible middle linebacker and they've had a few since then yeah. right they it's it's become a bit of a factory maybe there's another name if i scroll derwin james i was high on i was very high oh Der- derwin was my number three probably chubb nelson and derwin were the guys i loved we, we won't jump too far down we'll sort of stay on track so yeah. of the of the top 10 you thought brown should have went chubb nelson and hindsight's 2020 would that have made them yeah i think the browns are in a much better situation if they went that route was well, Miles was the year before, right? Not the year after? It was the year before, yes. Okay, was, yeah. So the plan kind of would have depended on them going to get a better QB or sucking hard enough to go get Kyler the next year, I guess. Right, right, which is hard, yeah. it was just, which is a hard wait. Colts, I just, Colts thought, might be I just didn't like any of these quarterbacks, and I thought Nelson and Chubb were, like, generational. Chubb never quite lived up to it. Quinton's had a down year and he was dinged up last year, but his rookie and sophomore seasons, he looked like the best guard of all time. He was murdering. Yeah, this might hopefully this is just a blip because the Colts yeah. but like there's there's no uh, free agency coming up for him anytime soon. I still have big faith. Like I said, I think he's the best guard I've ever seen in college. We sort of touched on the QBs, we touched on the Browns. There's a real elephant in the room, and I am gonna take my fucking victory lap while carrying my flowers. Saquon Barkley will be the last running back drafted this high. And maybe I'm not. Right. Has to be. And I was so out on him. 
Mind you, I do have a Big Ten bias against three schools. <laughs> and conveniently, he they're was, all called rape state. They're all called rape state. He fell into that category, and trust me, I ate shit for the first year and a bit. He looked I was out of off this. the entire time. I'm with you, and I, and I, unlike you, was super in on Zeke. I thought Zeke was yeah, I was opposite, like a super can't miss. I never liked Saquon because, and the same problem he had up until this most recent year, it's all or nothing with him. And I just don't think that's the best way to play running back in the NFL. And before you trash us, I will probably be in on Zeke. Or sorry, in on Barkley this year in fantasy, as Parsons was last year. Fantasy is not the reality. Though. We're not. We're talking about the football player. Yeah, winning football games and just a running back at two is bananas. I haven't yeah, dug into the tape yet, but I've heard Bijan Robinson is a comparable prospect to Barkley. Love him. And people are talking about him going in the twenties. I, I love Bijan Robinson, but this is where this sort of ended. This like yeah. top two or three running back is nuts. Um, I think at the time people were fine with it from the Giants and or I guess Giants fans and sort of neutrals. And now everybody's very anti RB, which makes sense. And he got paid a boatload of money. And I can't say no, no he, he only got the franchise tag. Oh, did he? Yep. Which was what? Probably 10, 11 million, something like that. Well, I thought he got paid more. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of uh, Daniel Jones. They gave Daniel Jones the big contract, gave safe yeah. one. He uh yeah. It's, and it's to the point where running backs are worthless. Rashad Penny got like a million dollars. Yeah. Damian Harris got like fucking one point five. And these are like legitimately good runners. They've got their flaws. Like even Miles Sanders, he's only getting like three million a year. And it's crazy. It's like these are good running backs. Yeah. But, but you know what? In the end, it comes down to what you initially said with Quinton Nelson is the trench stuff is what matters. That's that's yeah. what wins you. That's winning football, right? So um Denzel Ward. I wasn't crazy about the pick because of how high it is. Yeah, I didn't like Ward coming out either. You know what, though? I think I, I'm, I've matured as a football fan and my knowledge in it that I was so high on Sauce Gardner this year. You can't take a corner this high. It's possible. Oh, it's, yeah, absolutely. He's just not that prospect to me. And also, school didn't help. But I Yeah, was, and uh, we've kind of had to eat our words. He's had a good career. I don't think a great career. Sure. I, I don't like the contract they gave him. I think they paid him like a top five corner. And I don't think he's that. But he's at least good. And when you're when you have two top four picks, you better get someone good. Uh we could sort of do we could touch on Roquan Smith, who's had a good NFL career. I think a little bit of a peak and valley thing. Uh the valley hasn't been that that poor, but I feel like it's only gonna ramp up on Baltimore. <laughs> I'd argue he's the second best linebacker in the NFL. So if you're gonna yeah. draft a guy in the top ten, you can't do much better. True. Um the Bears flipped him for not enough. Right. To me, like, so the thing that's really baffling to me with the Bears and so frustrating, they trade away Roquan, they don't get a huge return for him, and then immediately go and sign Tremaine Edwards to top of the market money. Roquan Smith is leaps and bounds better than him. Why Why get rid of one to sign the other? That's fucking amazing. Fucking same draft class. That's great. Yeah. Eight, eight and 16 got, like, they, the Bears just fucking mentally did the gymnastics and were like, we got rid of the eighth pick. And we signed the 16th for comparable money. I like Tremaine Edmonds. I like Rick R- on Smith better. He's, he's much better. I, I really don't think it's a debate. Uh, Mike McGlinchey is the, you know, wh- wh- I don't even know how to paint him. Is he a good offensive lineman? I feel like you've been out on him. Solid, yeah, I think good's the, the, the right word. I think he got paid too much. But again, that's that's the nature of free agency. If you try to build your team on the market, it, it's going to cost you too much money. Right. 10 through 20 is fun. So yeah, we've, touched, fun. we've touched on Rosen. So Mika Fitzpatrick, good NFL safety. I'm, uh, good, solid. Very, very good. And honestly, he's been downright fantastic for Pittsburgh. On Miami, he was good. On Pittsburgh, he's been incredible. Exactly. Vita Vey, there's no way he, he's been honest about his age. He's much older. It's a lot, he's so that's, that's a stump favorite. Shout out to Vita Vey. He's fucking fantastic. Deron Payne, very interesting. You're not out on him. You just don't think he's worth the money that he got. Yeah, the contract's rough. Contract's rough. Thinking at the – I feel like at the time, you and I agreed that Marcus Davenport was like a, a real – a real like shot down the field. Didn't really – Yeah, it was a big reach. Yeah. I do remember this one very strongly because I was watching with Stu, our baseball analyst, who is a big Saints fan – and I had kind of been whispering in his ear about how incredible Derwin James is. And he thought they were trading up to go get him, mm-hmm. which would have been have. real something. But, I mean, 
kind of, but I understood what they were doing. They're at the end of Drew Brees' career. They're pushing all in for a Super Bowl right now, and the one thing the team is missing is a secondary edge rusher aside Cameron Jordan. And he was the only one in this class. It was a very, very weak edge rush class. So they traded up to get the only one in to try and go get that Super Bowl. And if not for the worst missed call in NFL history, they might have gotten They're, They're right there. there. And they, they needed Marcus Davenport to do it. So I, I do think this is the right pick in hindsight, even though he's not the best player. Okay, like, just quick guess. How old is Cam Jordan? 34. He's, he's been around. 33. I, yeah. I, I swear he feels older. Yeah, he feels like he's been around since, like, 2005. Yeah, so the fact he's he's lasted the tail of time. Colton Miller, not even sure. No idea. Uh, he had a big uptick last year. He looked a lot better. Okay. Hasn't been great, though, but that's kind of what you want. I mean, I think he's on a more friendly deal than McGlitchy, so that's a thing. Uh, and then a solid 16 through 19, in my opinion. Tremaine Edmonds, who we just mentioned. Good NFL or drafting at 16. That's not a bad spot. Derwin James, I feel like, is actually – He's underperformed my expectations. He can't stay healthy. But yeah, which is wild because he's been like the top five safety in the league. But, but I, I'm with you. I, I thought this was dude was incredible. Yeah, he's he. I, I think I just I probably overhyped him in my brain. Um, that, that was also just a really fun era in Florida State football. Like that that range from like 2015 to 2018 was really fun. Yeah, they ate shit literally <sighs> this year or the year after. Yeah, it just fell apart. Uh, Jair Alexander, who has turned out to be. One of the better shit talkers in the NFL, but a solid, solid cornerback. I think a lot of people have him ranked higher than I maybe do. But um, he is he is fantastic. I think he's a product of his defense personally, but I it think helps. he's solid, right? Um Lane Vander Esch, who you made a comment last time we mentioned him resigning with the Cowboys. If he if he gets his snaps in, he's fantastic. He's very good. Availability is a real question mark with him, unfortunately. Um Anything in the late or early to late twenties? Anyone you want to flag? I see a couple names, but I'll, I'll let you. I'm not so much a person, but Rashad Evans also goes as a linebacker, which by my count is the fifth off-ball linebacker in this draft. All right, or sorry, fourth. But that's four off-ball linebackers in the top twenty-two. I think that's also done. Dead. You're right. Dead. If Nicobe Dean comes out in this class, he probably goes tenth overall, or something like that. I, I just don't think that they understood the value of that position yet. See the parallels. Like I love, I love me some Roquan Smith. I also love me some Nicobe Dean. And Nicobe Dean, I, I told you, fell way too far. But yeah. it's it's the off ball linebacker thing. Um, he he cool. had rough medicals too, though Nicobe. He did. Couple cool wide receivers in in the twenty zone. Uh, I'm gonna say two fun ones. DJ Moore. We're really gonna know what DJ Moore is this season. This is gonna be a real indicator what what he builds. Right, what, what he builds, yes. Wise, I think he's solid. Everyone really likes him. Um, Calvin Ridley had a fucking peak. He had a peak there where he was. This is another one where we're gonna really find out who he is. Yeah, but he's gonna be the unquestioned number one with what most people agree is a superstar in the making quarterback. You're gonna get all the targets you can handle, man. Like, help this me. is your chance to go get 1800. Tell me, who who did they have at wideout already? Atlanta when Calvin Ridley got there was it Rock? Julio. Oh, Julio. Julio. That's right. That, uh, the, the name was escaping me for whatever reason. Calvin really was put into a really, really big spot really early and took away some uh, some coverage from one of the best wideouts of our generation, right? So, yeah. Right, so. The pick right after him is a fun one, too. Rashad Penny is quite the what-if, man. Oh, yeah. When he's on the field, he's a mean runner. And he's on Philly this year. If he can stay on the field... That's a dog. That is a fun player to watch. For peanuts. For yeah, peanuts. Like barely the, the league minimum. Like, running backs are worth nothing. Again, Damian Harris has been a really, really efficient back for five years. And he got nothing. Yep. Uh, speaking of Damian Harris, the Pats got their Sony Michelle in the 31st. Yeah, I hated this in the moment. And it, it, it just it was made worse that Lamar was the next pick. It just, but did, he, did he have a good uh, Patriot run for a 31st overall, knowing the Patriot? Yep. Yeah, he did, right? Yep, he was a solid pot. Yeah. But and like, but you can keep making the arguments like, oh, he won two Super Bowls. Like, well, I don't think he's why. Like, he doesn't he hurt them. He's arguably the third best running back on that team. But he doesn't hurt them. And that no. team, that team is the first team through the door with a committee. Every team in the NFL that now does the committee 
whether they admit it openly or not, the Patriots showed you this is what you do. You I get that. At the same time, I thought he was the second best running back in his backfield drafted in this five picks. Okay. Like Nick Chubb goes four picks later, and I thought Nick Chubb was almost <laughs> as good as Saquon. Okay, so if I'm going to be honest with you, the fact they came from the same backfield, I I will I would be remiss. I'm probably one of the biggest Nick Chubb, Chubb fans you'll ever meet. Thought Sony Michelle was a better running back. I did, I did, I I, I, I sipped the juice, I did, and I believe you. Nick Chubb gave. I know this is going to sound really fucked up. He gave like fullback ish vibes. But it, it it turned out he has elite speed. He can fucking read the field. Yeah. And it doesn't hurt that where Nick Chubb went to play football. Let's never forget that. Where of you course. Going, right? Unreal line. I, I really like broken tackles translating from college to the pros. I think that does better than making people miss. I okay. don't think guys run past you as often as they do in college. But if guys get their hands on you and you can still just power through it, that I think translates a little better. And this, again, goes so strongly to why that number two overall pick is so bad. It was the same in the Zeke year. Pre-draft, if you asked me, I would say Zeke is a generational talent. Dalvin Cook's going to go in the second, and he's almost as good. And if you asked me for this one, I'd say Saquon is a generational talent, and Nick Chubb's almost as good, and he's going to go in the second round. You're right. It's so, not worth that huge overpay the to margin. go get a little better. Yeah, the mar- the margins are close. Listen, I, I also was a fan of Carryon Johnson out of Auburn who went 43rd. Didn't really have much of an NFL career, but I think if you compared collegiate stuff, yep. he was very close to Saquon as well, right? It, I think it. this is going to sound like such an SEC thing to say before we do the top 10 redraft. Coming out of the SEC as a running back does hold more weight because I feel like you are facing more professionals on defense yes. consistently. And those are the arm tackles you've got to break. There's no coincidence why these two guys got drafted so close. They must have just been coin flips. I just love Nick Chubb so much now at the pro level. I feel like a dummy, but I feel like Sony was was just fine. And the Super Bowls or whatever, it's a team, it's a team award, but give him credit. Um, biggest miss of my draft. And he's a Patriot now. And this may change. It's Mike Gusecki. I had such high hopes for Mike Gusecki. Out of that school, for me to plant the flag for him, I was so Something. big. No. Pardon? That's that's big for you to, to be back in the Penn State guy. I, I was very, very big on Mike Gusecki. I did I was in a dynasty draft that your buddy Clarky kicked me out of. I had I traded a bunch of picks. No, no, actually I traded Saquon for a bunch of picks from Joey. And I took Gusecki in like the third round. It never panned out. But I, I've been wrong. He's starting to pan out, though. That's the thing. The, yeah. I think drafting a tight like it's we're going to talk about this a lot in the coming weeks because everyone is all about this tight end class, tight end class, tight end class. Tight ends fucking suck coming into the league. Mm-hmm. Like if you look back on the first round tight ends of the last like ten years, it's awful. They're all busts, and the ones who aren't take four years to become something. It's they are a like grown big. man's position. They're like bigs in the NBA. They're like big. A little bit. It takes a minute for them to translate for the game to move. Yeah, so so much of the tight end position is just like understanding zone defenses and finding the little soft spots, not these raw athletic numbers. And it takes them four or five years to get there. And I think just using that first round pick is a death sentence on them. Agree. Um, I've kind of skipped over your boy, Shaq Leonard, 36th overall. Ooh. Again, another off ball linebacker and fucking great. Man, Shaq Leonard, Roquan Smith, Fred Warner's coming up in like the fourth round, I believe. What a hell of a linebacking class. Oh, yeah. Tremaine Edmonds, too, who I'm not a fan of, but, like, he's a productive player. We can argue Warner, Leonard, and Roquan are three of the best. Or is that one, two, three? It's a fair case. It's a it's a tough case to dispute, to be honest. Who are we missing? Matt Milano's great. No. Uh, I, feel, I feel like there's a big one that I'm forgetting for sure. There is, there Honestly, is. like, if you want to tell me that's the top three, it's that's fair. And it's fucking crazy is I think this uh, like slam dunk number one was drafted 70th overall. Like to me, the best the best yeah. of the three. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, that's this, a, is, a, this is a fun little stretch of this draft coming up too here. The this mid 40s to early 50s. A lot of very solid players. Christian Kirk just got paid, had a very sneaky good year. Like I think he was like seventh in yards or something like that. Like he had a really nice year. Dallas Goddard at 49 to the Eagles, emerging again as one of the better tight ends as he's finishing up this rookie deal. Yeah. And a real sleeper, Jesse Bates, on the move now. I believe he's down in Atlanta. Uh, he got paid. He got paid. Yep. yep. That's going to be a theme in these, right? That's that's that fifth year. Yep. 
That's right. He, he, at the end of the first round, DJ Chark and Brian O'Neill, both pro bowlers, both had great runs. You know, very solid second round. Oh, yeah, it's a fantastic second round. I think it's very funny, though, like to beat on your tight end thing is the Eagles drafted Dallas Goddard when they already had a tight end in, in the building. Just goes to show having depth there and you can draft later. They had Ertz already. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's a very rotate ro- like rotational position and you can flip them. And I, and I like don't want to pay really. Like you don't want to give these guys big money. That's what the Pats are doing, right? The Pats keep going with this tight end prove prove it deals. John the problem is they did give the tight ends money, and it was a disaster. They paid Hunter Henry and they paid Johnu Smith when they signed those contracts. They were top five paid tight ends. They oh, were just really? junk, but yeah. but sh- short term. No, for like five years. Like Johnu oh. Smith has been a dud. He's been a fucking anchor on the on the books. He's gone. Eh? Yeah, thank God. Uh, coming to the third round, some interesting names: Justin Reed. Uh, safety, he's bounced around a bit. Absolute thumper. Uh, BJ Hill, favorite. Dollar store Aaron Donald on the Bengals is great. Number 70 overall, Fred Warner. Best linebacker in the sport. Top five defender, maybe, if you really want to go for it. The dude's yeah. so fucking awesome. Uh, Sam Hubbard, another Bengal. Uh, they really loaded up on this draft, and that kind of makes sense why five years later you're really good. That totally makes Eighth sense. overall, another current Bengal, but drafted by the Ravens, Orlando Brown. Just an absolute monster of a human. In the com- in the coming episodes, we got to get into the weeds about Orlando Brown and how I feel like he's a little bit overhyped. I think PFF, I feel like PFF is a little bipolar with regards to him. They're in and they're out. They're in and they're out. Oh. We won't get into it today, but he is a name I have like circled for down the road discussion points. Then three picks later, that same Ravens team gets Mark Andrews. Really, really monster when he's on the field. A little bit of injury trouble the last couple of years, but when he's out there, Pretty Fuck fucking yeah. sweet. You get your quarterback and tight end combo from the same draft, eh? Yeah, what, like man. Plus Orlando Brown, who played left tackle for several years. Talk about a fucking draft. Yeah, that's massive. That, that's actually really, really. That's how teams are built, right? That's the reality. Absolutely. Why Teller's in the fifth? Right? Uh, Josh Sweat for the Eagles in the fourth. So a fairly deep draft. Uh, Wyatt Teller, what a fucking steal that is. That as late as that is, right? Yeah, as late as that is, that's insane. And then the best player the Pats got in this whole draft, J.C. Jackson, undrafted out of Maryland. Unbelievable. Good for him. And the fucking Chargers paid that boy. Not good for them. No. And fuck, that's the reality of it, right? You you die for the, the skill position. So we got we got nine left on this. So we're gonna we're gonna break down the top ten on our redraft. We'll try to meet in the middle on some of these. Yeah, we'll redraft until we feel like the names aren't interesting anymore. Okay. Go. Go with your – your. Uh, uh, this is always the rule thing. Are we drafting based on the team's needs or just the best players? I think we have to draft a little more for the best player. Yeah. With more inf- emphasis on positional value necessarily than the, the team needs. Unless, like – when the Pats come up, it's hard to argue to give them a quarterback when Tom Brady's on the team. Kind of thing. Right. And it's also going to be a reason. Let's not cloud our brains with like what happens in the draft after this and who's in the building afterwards. We're just looking at the 2018 version. So Cleveland Browns with the first overall pick. There's only one answer here. It's Josh Allen. Yeah, true. Josh Allen. You have to you have to win like again. Yeah. You have to pretend their careers are basically the same thing. Who right. knows okay. if he develops the same way without those guys, but the players they are right now, it's Josh Allen's not close, which is depressive considering who number two is about to be. You trying to dis- are you trying to make the case for Lamar over Josh? No, I'm I'm not going to. I think it's close. I think it's close. I'm not going to. You know what? It'd be really cool to get a Cleveland Browns fan's perspective, though. It'd be really interesting. Because I feel like there is a Lamar fandom that we like. Ah, yeah, I do want to make the case. I do. I do want to make that case. I think I think if if you put Lamar Jackson on the Cleveland Browns who addressed offensive line stuff, and we we know what they do later in this draft, and I don't know if Nick Chubb survives it because with our redraft philosophy, I think he does. You're talking about a backfield with fucking Lamar Jackson, and yeah, sure, not the greatest arm. Fucking Nick Chubb. The only thing is that the, the – Durability. I'm talking myself out of it. It's just Josh Allen plays every fucking game, even when it feels like his elbow's cooked. And 
at best versus at best. I know Lamar's got an MVP and Josh Allen doesn't. But at their best, you feel like Josh Allen puts you in the running for a Super Bowl at all times. I don't think Lamar necessarily does that for you. I think there's a teardrop there. I think there's your Mahomes tier of just him. I think the next tier is Allen, Burrow. You want to make the case for Herbert, Rogers, a couple others, okay. And I think that third tier Lamar is at the top of that. Sure. New York Giants go Lamar? Absolutely. Again, I really don't think there's a question. I did. The re- the real the real question that like, gets interesting is who do the Jets go at three? I think Alan Lamar is no doubt about it. You fucking slam that pick on the table. I think I, I think the Jets would would address because this is also based on building a team our way in the trenches. I think you go you know Pro Bowl Pro Bowl guard. If you go Pro Bowl guard because off ball linebacker I'm, I know never really gets you out of bed. Do not go Nelson. Do not go Nelson at three, knowing what we know. And I know there's been a dip, or is there like it's tough? I mm-hmm. guess so. It's it's Nelson. It's Fred Warner. So off, so off ball linebacker. Fred, at th- I, I feel like you would have jumped out my throat if I said Fred Warner at three because I I feel like Fred Warner is. I'm, my just, I'm just I'm just like spitballing the best players. Derwin James, Bradley Chubb, Bradley Chubb, Roquan. Is did Jair Alexander? Is a top five corner that guy? Sure, he's top five corner. I don't know that that Jets use number three there. Who you know the quarterback hungry Jets, and there's not another quarterback we'd be willing to throw in the mix. I think it's probably Chubb. Okay, I I, I think the edge rusher probably gets gets the edge here. I could give that to you, and then do the Cleveland Browns shore up their offensive line even more with Quinton Nelson? I think so. Yeah. Right, you just, you the, just got the the superstar quarterback. You you lock that shit up. Team, team philosophy, and you end up with Wyatt Teller late in the draft, and it's like don't, oh, at that point. Something we kind of just glanced over. Very weak wide receiver draft. There's some good ones. No, but it, it, it's DJ Moore and then Calvin Ridley, who was like 24, 25 when he came out. Like he's a he's surprisingly old. Yep, agree. Yeah, it's, it's not a great one. It's it's a good one. Yeah. Broncos at five. So now we've gotten past the valuable positions for the most part. I think I slammed my foot down with like a like now knowing what we know is a Vita V. Now knowing what we oh, know. Interesting. Do you t- no? You don't take the run stopper over some of these other guys. Do you don't st- you don't take the run stuffing nose tackle over the top corners or the safety? Do you? I think I do. I think I do. I think I, I, I more slam my foot down on Vita Vey to another off-ball linebacker. I, I can get into a conversation with, like, a corner. I think I take Vita Vey over Roquan here for the Broncos. Um, it'd, be, it'd be Fred, not Roquan. I think Fred would go first, right, of the of these guys? Right, because Fred's not gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fred's not even gone. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. So, yeah. I think I, think I would take Fred over Vita. I think I would take... Jair? I think I would take Jair over Vita. I think I would take Derwin over Vita. Like I, I, you know, I love me a trench guy, but I just feel like that's not as best as valuable as much as I do love the guy. Yeah, so I, I, I disagree. I think, I think for a guy like G, Jair Alexander to be as successful as he is, they need a fucking no tackle as good as like a Vita Vey type thing. When I say that in a vacuum, is I think. But who can I was gonna say who's the who's the defensive tackle on Green Bay that's I know but I, I believe Green Bay's front seven is elite. And although they struggled this year, I don't think Jair Alexander was he as good this year as he was in, in past. Was, real. was he? Yeah. Remember he came back and turned uh, Justin Jefferson into that's a That's right. Yeah, that's right. He, he's a top shelf corner. But he also got fucking chewed out by Justin Jefferson uh, earlier in the year, right? Like there No, uh, he didn't play. He didn't? For week one? I believe so. Definitely. We go Jair here. I, I I don't love it, but we can go Jair. I think I think it's him just because the corner is probably the guy you want over the nose tackle, I think. Okay. Jair. Jair at five. 